Okay, this is video number two in my video series about how to use a Dobsonian telescope. And in this video, I want to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of each of the parts of the telescope. So we'll start with the optical tube. And that's this big, long cylinder right here. And there's not a lot to know about it other than it's basically what houses all the parts of the telescope. You've got the mirrors, you've got the, the finder scope, everything else. And, you know, you can stick your hand inside the tube. In fact, when you're adjusting the telescope, moving it around to find what you want to see, you'll actually put your hands on the, the optical tube to move it around. And it's perfectly fine. In fact, it's best when you're looking at things, if you need to hold something, to hold the optical tube rather than to hold the other components. Okay, so this next part I need to come down here because we're going to talk about the base. And so this is the mount. It's known as a Dobsonian mount. And it's what the telescope sits on. It's how, what, uh, how the telescope moves around. Basically, you have a base plate down here. And in between that base plate and this plate here, there's a bearing surface, and so it can move freely. And what you'll notice is in the bottom of it here, there'll be a, there's a knob here. And that basically tightens and loosens your telescope onto the bearing disc. And so if you loosen it, you can move the telescope around really easily. I like it to be tight because then as you move, your, te your telescope isn't going so fast or so far away from you. And then up here, you have where the telescope is actually mounted. So I'm just going to stand up here and pull the telescope out so you can see it. And so, so you can see this is how you um, mount the telescope. Normally when I carry the telescope around, I carry it around in two parts, the base and then this top part. And so these side mounts right here, they're adjustable back and forth. And that's so that you can balance your telescope. So you need to, when you set up your telescope, you're going to need to set these up. Basically with mine, you have these nuts. You loosen them up, then you can slide these blocks back and forth. And you set them up so that the telescope is balanced. So it's not trying to fall back or trying to fall forward, but it just sits there balanced real nicely. And you can see with mine, it doesn't fall forward or back. And then what you can do is you can loosen these or tighten them. And that's what makes your telescope either stiff to move up and down or, or really fluid. I like it to be pretty stiff. I tighten these up about as tight as I can tighten them. Okay, so now back up here, talk about the next part of the telescope, and that's the primary mirror. And that's the mirror at the bottom. And remember I told you, basically it's a piece of glass that's been ground out in a concave manner. And it's not a, a spherical concave, it's a para parabolic concave. And um, it's where all the light comes to, and then it's the part that actually focuses the light into a single point. And this is a 1200 millimeter focal length telescope. So that means that when the light hits that mirror, it bounces off 1.2 meters. And at that, at that point of 1.2 meters, all the light has converged into a very small point. The important thing to know about the, the primary mirror is that it needs to be aligned properly. And I'm going to teach you more about how to do the alignment it, it's called collimation later. But basically you can see on the base of my telescope you have these locking knobs, there's three, and when you need to collimate the telescope, when you need to adjust the mirror, you loosen these three knobs, and then these other three knobs are, on, they have springs, and you use them to adjust the alignment of the mirror until you get it to where you want it. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is the secondary mirror. And this is the mirror at the top that's at a 45 degree angle. And you know, if you stick your hand in the telescope, make sure you just don't touch the mirror because you'll make it a little bit dirty. It it'll, probably won't affect it too much, but you want to keep it as clean as possible and you don't want to have to ever clean the mirrors if possible. Now this one also needs to be adjusted, needs to be aligned properly. And so on mine, I have these three little adjuster screws. And I just take a Phillips head screwdriver and I, I put them in or out while I'm adjusting the telescope to get it to where I want it to be. And I will show you how to do that later as well. Uh, the next part we'll talk about is the finder scope. And this is actually a refractor telescope. So you have the reflector on the bottom and then a little refractor up top. And there's different types of finder scopes. Mine is just a straight telescope and it has a crosshairs inside. So what I'll do when I want to look at something, let's say I want to look at Jupiter. So I look through the finder scope, I find Jupiter, and I put Jupiter right in the center of the crosshairs. And then once I have that aligned, then I know that my telescope is aligned to it, and I can look through the eyepiece and see, the, see Jupiter. 
Now this takes alignment too. Just like the scope in the gun, you have to align it so that you hit your target correctly. And so you can see on this one, there's a couple of adjuster screws right here. And so what I'll, I'll teach you more about aligning that later. But that's another thing that you'll have to do is align the finder scope. The next part is the focuser. And so this is the focuser right here. And you can see um, with the big knob here, it goes in and out really fast. That's the course adjustment. And then you have the fine adjustment, which is the smaller knob. Now, sometimes these focusers, at least mine, can be very tricky to get to work properly. And it's got these two knobs here, and I have to adjust them just right to get the right amount of friction so that when I um, move the, the knob, it, it'll turn. And if I don't have it just right, then the eyepiece just falls right down to the base. Or, if it's too tight, it doesn't move at all. So I don't know how difficult yours will be, but mine is quite difficult to get, get to work properly. Now the last part that's important is the eyepiece. Now the eyepiece is what you actually look at to look at the stars. It's basically a magnifying glass, that's, or a microscope. It's a microscope to look at the light. So the light's been gathered down to one little point. Remember I talked about the focal length here? And so when the focal length of the telescope meets the focal length of the, of the eyepiece, then you'll get a really good crisp view. And so when I say the focal length, all um, eyepieces have their focal length written on them. This one's 17 millimeter. You have 5 millimeter, you have 20 millimeter, 25 millimeter, 40 millimeter. The bigger the number is, the less magnification you have. And we'll talk more about that later. The smaller the number is, the more magnification you have. So for instance, if you want to look at the moon, it's really big in the sky, so you might want a 30 millimeter eyepiece, eye depending on the, the focal length of your telescope. Or if you're looking at something really, really, really far away, and you um, need a lot of magnification to see it, you might want a really small eyepiece, like 5 millimeters. And eyepieces are probably the most, um, is the easiest way to improve your viewing experience. So you have a, quite a range of eyepieces from really cheap and not very good to very expensive and very amazing. And we'll talk more about eyepieces and their relation to the telescope and the focal length of the telescope later. Now one other thing I want to show you is that there are two different types of sizes of eyepieces that are common use. One is a 2 inch and one is a 1.25 inch. And that's basically the diameter of the piece that you're putting in. Now most larger telescopes of the size, they have a 2 millimeter orifice and also a 1.25 millimeter orifice. So your telescope will come with an adapter. And so you're, depending on the lens, this, this one can be modified to either take a 1.25 or 2, two inch. So that's just one more thing, one more tool in your arsenal of, of parts to be able to use different eyepieces. So, that's it for this video about the different parts of the telescope. Next video we're going to talk a little bit more about all the accessories that you can use and that you'll need when you go out for your night sky viewing.